Boltworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boltworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. So welcome back, everybody. I hope you're having a great week. My name is Andy with Boltworks Today. In this video, I'm looking to get the covers made for these side storage lockers. Now, this week ended up getting cut quite a bit short because of some storms that we had earlier last week, basically not being able to get out of the house for almost four days. But let's see what we can get done. So off camera, I've come in and I've pre-cut and incised a, a, a temporary plywood template that I'm going to be using for actually cutting and trimming off the actual kusa. Now, I didn't want to use the kusa as a test board or as a guinea pig because, well, plywood's a lot cheaper than the, than the kusa. But when I'm looking at this, uh, the main reason I did this was obviously wanting to get the shape, but also I wanted to, I guess, double check or confirm that I got my heights right uh, on here as well as here. And again, this being a temporary support uh, along the back here. Now, these tops or these lids are going to be two layers of kusa laminated together. And elevation wise, you know, as far as how much clearance I have from here up to here, if I double stack this up, I'm still a little bit low from here, which is perfect because the kusa panels are going to be getting glassed, which will add a little bit of extra thickness. So I think height wise, I think we should be in good shape. Now, I mentioned that these are going to be opening lids. Now, the whole thing is not going to open. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out basically a smaller area of this overall panel, and that's going to be the opening door. So when I cut out this area here, which is actually going to end up being the, the part of the door that I'm hoping to be able to use as a template, when I'm making this cut, I need to make sure that I stay on one side of the line or the other. I can't start on the inside and then maybe drift off over to this side of the line and then maybe back over. That'll just make the cut too wonky, and by the time it's actually you know, shaved off and cleaned up to be nice and straight, I will have removed too much material and I won't be able to use this as a template. I'll have to recut another one. So whether I start on the inside or the outside, it doesn't really matter as long as I am consistent from where I start going all the way around to where I stop. So the cut on this one went okay. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, I came in at a little bit of an angle right here. And for the most part, everything else was good except these corners. These corners really kind of fought me a little bit. The, the blade just wouldn't take this tight of a radius for whatever reason, but I'll be able to come in and just kind of clean up right to the right to the line here. So they'll give me a good, av good edge on here. And then any, any kind of, I guess, touch-ups I need to do on the actual part that's going to be mounted to the boat. Uh, just because this is going to be a template, I can come in with some quick set, you know, like uh, Bondo or Ad, Ad Tech, you know, whatever. Some, some kind of a quick set um, filling or fairing compound and just kind of touch up those corners, sand them off the way that they're supposed to be so that there's a good fit all the way around. And then, you know, then that'll work just fine for going around here with the router to trim off the kusa. Now to make sure that I'm going to have even consistent spacing all the way around, uh, I'm going to be using, well these are just like basically little four millimeter little spacing shims, uh, but I'm going to place them in. Four millimeter is about, what, I'm not a metric guy, it's a little bit more than, or a little bit less than an eighth of an inch, it's either more or less, I'm not quite sure. But I want to make sure that I have that even, oop, there's one stuck together. an even space all the way around because uh, I am going to be wrapping glass once I get this out, once I actually get this cut out with the kusa, I am going to be wrapping these edges with glass. So I need to have a little bit of a gap here to account for the thickness of the glass both on the lid side as well as I guess this frame side. Let's see how we did here. 
All right, so we got a good roughly eighth inch reveal all the way around until you get up to here. And it's just a little bit, a little bit wider. I mean, that's, that's a little sloppy. But I can fill this in with a quick set compound and that will work. Going over the other side, it's a, it's a bit worse actually. <laughs> so here's an oldie that you haven't seen in a while. This is the old AdTech P14. And the reason I'm gonna be using this for kind of building up these, uh, these radiuses, and I'm not gonna need much, less than an eighth of an inch, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna actually overbuild it a little bit so that I, when I actually sand it to shape, I don't have to come back and do any touch-ups, hopefully. But the reason I'm using the, uh, the P14 is because it's a, it's a quick set compound. So by the time I get this mixed up uh, and laid down, it will be ready to sand in about 10, 10 or 15 minutes. So this is a, uh, <laughs> So this is a compound that uses a cream hardener, which is why it uh, sets up so fast. Usually cream hardeners set up a lot faster than ones that use, say, like MEK or any kind of uh, uh, other type of hardener. Now, if you don't have this, I do realize that this is, uh, it can be kind of difficult to find. Bondo would work perfectly for this. And again, Bondo is another uh, cream hardener type of a compound. You're not looking for, to make a finished piece, you know, that's actually gonna go in use. This is strictly a template. So Bondo for something like this, would be absolutely perfect as well. And since it is a little bit old, I'm gonna give it a little extra hot sauce here. Okay, so basically, when I sanded this face flat, it kind of created a natural face ridge right around here that just, by luck, is pretty darn close to where I actually need to sand this back to. And that was the case on both of these, uh, both of these hatches. So for right now then, I'm just gonna take it over to the uh, little spindle sander, drum oscillating sander thingamajigger, and round off these corners, and I think we should be all set. Let's see what we got going on here. Bird's eye view, good even gap, which we had. Corner looks good. Top is good, back down. Okay, I'm happy with that one. On to the next. Very nice. All right, so now the next thing I need to do is actually transfer this onto the Kusa, you know, trace it all out so I can actually cut it. Um, I'm really trying to get all of, the, all of the pieces cut out of this scrap, you know, that's, that's laying here right now. I don't want to dive into and start cutting up a brand new piece. Not, not for this. I, when I initially looked at this, I thought that I'm, yeah, I think I, it'll be tight, but I think there's enough room to, uh, to get all four pieces. Now, just real quick, um, someone had ma made a comment maybe a couple weeks ago asking if those, those cooler lockers, if they were gonna be insulated. And well, yes and no. I mean, kinda, sorta, I guess. The uh, Kusa is foam, which is, has insulating properties. Now, the, the tops for these, the, the lids here, they're gonna be two layers thick. So it's gonna be one inch thick of Kusa and then glass on top and bottom. So, and then the inside the locker itself, well, that's, I believe it's actually really close, if not slightly below the water line. So, the bottom of the locker should be kept, in theory, should be kept fairly cool by the water, you know, when it's, in the, when it's actually in the lake. And then uh, the tops, being that they're gonna be double insulated or double layered with the kusa, uh, that should keep any, a lot of the heat from the sun beating down and, uh, you know, keeping, so that, that cooler can stay nice and cool. So let me play a little bit of a jigsaw game and see if I can get these, these templates laid out so that I can get actual total four parts off of this scrap piece of kusa. It's gonna be tight. I hope that it works. I'm actually, I'm having second thoughts on it if this is the best way to uh, approach this here. Now, when I traced these out last night, essentially what I did is I laid it out like this, 
traced around the outside perimeter, carefully lifted off, I guess, what would be the, the frame part, I guess. And then I traced in closely around the perimeter of the actual lid. Now, by doing that, when I'm trying to cut this out, uh, essentially I need to make sure that I'm running the router or the, the, the jigsaw blade only within this little eighth inch or quarter inch, whatever this eighth inch, uh, four millimeter <laughs> spacing that I have around here. And, uh, you know, thinking back when I was cutting out the plywood, I had a hard time getting the, the jigsaw, getting the blade to actually cut this tight of a radius. It just didn't want to do it, which is why I had to come back and do these fills. Now, granted, Kusa is going to cut a little bit easier than the plywood, uh, but even still, uh, it doesn't give me a whole lot of margin here for, uh, for blade drift or anything like that, especially when you factor in the blade itself is roughly about a sixteenth of an inch wide. So when I'm actually running that through here, that's, oh, it's, it's like a thirty-second of an inch on either side of this blade. I just don't have a whole lot of confidence that I'm going to be able to make that cut with that tight of tolerance uh, without going outside of where I need to be, which would then render the part that I'm cutting out completely useless. So the whole reason I laid it out this way was to try and minimize waste, but I just, like I said, I just don't think this is going to work. So I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet, except the fact that there's going to be more waste than what I'd like, uh, you know, as far as off cuts. And I'm just going to flip this uh, Kusa panel back over and then cut out each piece individually, slightly oversized. That way I know for sure it's guaranteed to work. <laughs> So since I'm going to be laminating these, uh, these sheets of Kusa together, I wanted to make sure that I was going to actually do it correctly. Uh, you know, again, Kusa being a fairly new product that, you know, for me to be working with. So I got a hold of the folks uh, there and just to ask them, you know, what, what do you guys recommend? You know, should I be, can I just put, mix up some thickened resin and uh, laminate the two together like that? Or do I need to have some fiberglass in between there? Or, you know, basically, what do you recommend? And essentially they said either, either way it works fine. Um, they said that they've got builders that do, uh, they put glass or chop strand in between. They have plenty of others that don't do anything, they just laminate it with a thickened resin. They said either way it works perfectly fine. So I thought, that sounds good to me. So what I'm going to be doing here is uh, I'm using their, the two to one total boat uh, epoxy here. And I would recommend using epoxy rather than say like polyester for this. I, even if you want to do your glass work with poly, that's perfectly fine. But for laminating things, I just, I really prefer seeing epoxy. Just, I mean, it just, it, it works so much better. It, it really does for that kind of application when you're laminating things. But I'm just going to, uh, I'm not going to thicken this up very much. I just want to put enough, enough of the, uh, the silica in here just, just to give it some body, I guess. But for the most part, I want to leave it fairly thin because I want to be able to brush this in and I want to have it fairly thin on there so that when I actually put some weight on, I don't have a huge mess of squeeze out, you know, going everywhere, going everywhere.
Okay, so here's kind of what we're looking at for squeeze out. Again, it's definitely there, but it's not a tremendous amount. Just enough to give me a nice comforting feeling. <laughs> And just like that, my neighbor shows up. But uh, I got everything done that I need to get done today. So this, uh, I'm just going to leave this tonight, let the epoxy do its thing, and then we'll uh, check back in the morning. So good morning. Our epoxy is set up. I've removed all the weights. And now it's time to pop these kids off the plastic and get them trimmed up. So hopefully we don't have too many problems. Uh, well, hopefully we don't have any problems, but <laughs> one step at a time, let's see how this goes. So for attaching these templates to the kusa, I'm going to be using some hot glue and just to make sure that I can actually get the templates back off of the kusa, I put down some masking tape, so I'm going to put the glue on top of here, then the templates on top of that. Now if you don't have a, a hot glue gun, uh, double sided tape or carpet tape would also work really, really well. And I'm not going to be laying, putting down a whole lot of glue, just a little dollop on each corner and that's about it. As long as I have some excess kusa hanging over the sides of this template, then I'm in good shape. So I had a little bit of a whoopsie, uh, not, with the, not with the routing, well, kind of with the routing, I guess. But uh, when, I was, when I was going through and trimming everything off, I noticed that the, the, the vacuum wasn't sucking up much of the dust from the router. And last time I did this, basically I had almost zero dust uh, get away on me. And, you know, couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. Well, come to find out, you know, my, the vacuum system I use, so basically it's a, uh, it goes from the vacuum to what's called this, this little dust deputy, it's a little cyclone separator thing. Well, when this thing is full, which you can hear it, it's, it's up all the way up to the rim. When that thing is full, there's very little airflow, you know, actually going through to the vacuum. So there just, there wasn't enough, enough suction to, uh, to actually pull the dust from the router, but oh well, it's, it's done now. <laughs> But overall, the trimming part of this went really, really well. You know, I still have the nice, good, even spacing all the way around between the, I guess, the frame and the actual lid. And yeah, everything looks good. Now, there's one more thing that I want to do. Basically, I want to add on one more piece that's going to, I guess, kind of get glued onto the butt end here. But it's going to extend down about a half of an inch. So it'll come out an extra, you know, the thickness of the kusa, so half inch out, and then extend down a half inch. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to give me a lip along the bottom that I can basically grab onto for lifting the lid. And then I'll also be able to put on a little bit of a round over or, yeah, basically a round over, like a quarter inch uh, around the tops all the way around so there's no sharp edges to, you know, to eventually, you know, possibly uh, you scrape, your, scrape your leg against. And also by giving this round over, well, that's just going to make it easier to wrap the glass from the top uh, around and back down. So uh, that's the next thing to, that's the next thing on the agenda.
So with our edging strips routed out to exactly one and a half inches wide, uh, now we need to actually take these and cut them to length to cover each of these little sections, running through here, from here to here, and then again on this last edge. Now, one particular thing th to pay very, very close attention to is to make sure that I have this, you know, this whole assembly thing orientated correctly, because it would be a real bummer to actually have this, this lip extending up rather than going down. So just make sure I didn't screw anything up. I went through and I, I, I checked, double checked the fit up on the boat, and then I came in and I labeled one port bottom and port bottom just so that I don't accidentally have a brain fart and, and screw this up at the last step. So I'm just gonna line up the edge of this to the very edge of here, and then take a square, line that up to the inside of the edge of that, and with as fine of a pen as you have, or as I have, now this is one of those situations where it would be better to be just a little bit long than a little bit short. So uh, I may actually overcut this by just a hair. All right, well, with all the pieces cut, and basically cut to length, uh, now the last thing to do before I check out tonight is to actually <laughs> epoxy them in place. And for that, I'm gonna be using, uh, again, the two to one epoxy here by Total Boat. I am gonna thicken this probably about as much as I did last night. Just, yeah, kinda like a little bit thinner than ketchup. <laughs> So I've gone through and I sanded off the top, cleaned up all the excess epoxy, and then I came over with a router with a quarter inch roundover bit and just kind of eased over the, I guess, the top and the bottom edge of what's gonna be the, 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 the lifting part of the lid, I guess. But uh, generally speaking, I, I think it looks really, really nice. The, spa the spacing is still consistent all the way around on both panels. And uh, yeah, I think, like I said, overall, I think it looks pretty good but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna fit. And I, I haven't checked any of this yet, so I wanna bring it up on the boat, set it in place, and just kinda get a feel for how it looks. Just to hold the lid, I did come in and, and hot glue a couple of little tabs on here. I don't think they're gonna hold real well, but as long as they can hold it long enough just for me to get an idea as far as how things are coming together here. That's all it needs to do. Well, right off the bat, the fit over on this end is pretty good. There is a gap back here, uh, but all the glass needs, still needs to get laid up on here, so that'll, that will be taken up uh, you know, to fill that in. And then over in this corner, if you look at it from this side right here, you can see there's a little bit of a gap. You know, This isn't able to come against flush on here because this back corner is actually hitting the radius on this fairing compound. So and you can kind of see it there. So I've got a... Uh, I've got a couple of options. Focus, you Achoo! Hey, it works! <laughs> so either I can shave the backside of the kusa just to kind of conform to that radius you know, on, the, on the fairing, or I can kind of notch out the fairing. I, either way would work. Uh, most likely, I'm probably gonna notch the, the kusa just because it's a little bit easier standing, and uh, then I don't have to worry about uh, you know, trying to come in and, and do any little touch-ups in case I sanded a little bit too far on the fairing. So I'm probably gonna notch the back of the kusa, but overall, uh, I think it looks Pretty good. Again, there's still uh, about a quarter inch of glass that needs to get laid up, top and bottom, front and back, sides, edges, the whole works. And that, 
that's going to be a little bit tricky to say the least, just because a lot of the, a lot of the surfaces I'm going to be dealing with are only like an inch thick. So this is going to be a multi, multi, multi-step process <laughs> over a period of days. So um, that unfortunately is going to have to wait for the next video. So, uh, so, so I think at this point, we're going to wrap this one up. So I hope you enjoyed the video and, it, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not always subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you on board. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, critiques, constructive criticism, uh, please leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.